Network of awareness makes your brain coherent. One of the fastest growing podcasts, you can hear it 24 7. You got listeners out in London, informationalists in Paris. Echo spreading out, no parrot. Just dissect, digest, and share it. The righteous rhymes hit the spirit. Click 90 times, it won't perish. Cause y'all's the mind ain't no fairy tale like the barely our parents. It's time to rise, don't get weary. United minds, it's apparent. Download every single errand, but most ain't fit to catch it, even if they were Larry. Interviews, the interludes, they into you, taking you on a journey like no other. It places you in a state of awareness. It's your fault if you hate the truth. Cause y'all even y'all always on this way, my brother. Better change your views. Peace and greetings, presenting the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, providing in-depth information on society and culture in America and abroad, bringing you truth messages of inspiration, keen insight, reputable interviews, and so much more. So now, for the truth you've been waiting for, your host of the Network of Awareness podcast, the informationalist 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 peace and greetings to all the wonderful righteous brothers and sisters in this truth for all the people around the world you are now tuned in to the live broadcast of the network of awareness and i want to thank you people for joining me on this 300th episode this is going to be a remembrance episode of my nephew that i will always love and remember julian thaddeus Harley as well as celebrating the journey of coming to our 300th episode and now embarking onto the fourth season of the Network of Awareness. And we are only getting bigger and better. And we are not stopping because we can't stop now, right? So, brothers and sisters, I want to welcome you This is going to be a really intense, but also fun and joyous show because I'm telling you, um, I got real emotional just adding the artwork and putting this poem that I got from the internet from Tori Kane. And uh, I got really choked up for a while, right? And um, that's why I asked my queen to get onto the show with me today because I was going to need my queen to give me that moral support that I knew I was going to need to do this episode because it's a very emotional one. Um, because, I, you know, it's, it's been a long journey to get to where I'm at now and the journey still continues. But also because... I miss my nephew every day 
And um, that's that's my nephew in the artwork. So we're going to get this started. And because my nephew always wanted me to put music together, um, because, he, you know, once I stopped, he was very disappointed in me that I didn't do music anymore. And he was always telling me he couldn't wait to, like, come out with more. And he was one of my biggest supporters when it came to music. And he was very proud of his uncle. So we're going to remember him and we're going to celebrate the life that he was able to live, even though it was only 20, 26 years. But it was a life that I will always remember and he will always be within my heart. So let's get started, people. Let's start off with Can't Stop Now with uh, Brother Take One featuring myself. And let's get it popping, people. Peace, brother. I don't have a lot of time, Take. They got the dogs on me. You know, they really trying to get me to take this science appliance, brother. And you know I'm not doing that, man. Oh, where you at? Not doing it. I'm in an undisclosed location right now. Up in the nature spot near that cabin I used to go to. But they they got the dogs tracking me. They got the satellites. So... They eventually gonna get here I got it barricaded, you know what I'm saying? Cause the only way I'm taking that jab Is if I'm in a bag, brother So take, I just wanna tell you this Before anything else happens And I wanna get this out to you and let you know Alright, brother, take, brother, take We at the door I gotta tell you, just, just listen, brother, just listen Now it's time to get out your own way Allow y'all wait today it's your day to amaze in many ways Cause it's just another phase in this infinite space Where y'all be giving us grace I'm working the race with diligent praise A wavering faith I'll be damned if I stray from y'all's will and embrace Man sealed his fate with his ignorant ways The world is disgrace Vibration has raised at a very fast pace I'm present today in high frequency ways No more being enslaved or praise to Yahweh A Hebrew warrior from the land of the brave From the cradle to the grave to my very last day Send a serpent to his cave, God favored my way Never fearful or timid, it was written and given No religion, the vision can stop a messenger that's fulfilling his mission It only get worse before they get better But the story meant to last forever Even when the light is dim, the sun finds a way to shine again Things are getting ugly, things are getting cold But I know it's best to stay in my zone And I can't stop now I can't stop now hey. And won't stop, I gotta keep propelling Final destination is a room in the heavens Diligence and militants as well as my medicine I can live without a half, but his love is my everything COVID is on the road, got the world on its toes So many sheep with their eyes closed Hey sir, would you like to take the jab? Man, kiss my ass, stop living by what the news told you You got injustice, brutality, saturating the streets Blood spilling for no reason, thanks to the police Meanwhile, syringes are being taken with speed Can't do it, you ain't sticking no vaccination at me Despite all the chaos, I still manage to stay on the right path. Gotta keep my focus and my faith strong. All day long. Let spiritual music play on. All the honor, glory, and praise to Yahweh. Things uh. only get worse before they get better. But the story meant to last forever. Even when the light is dim, the sun finds a way to shine again. Things are getting ugly, things are getting cold. But I know it's best to stay in my zone. And I can't stop now. I can't stop now. Can't stop, I won't stop. 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 Just can't stop, I won't stop. What's happening to me in plain English with, without the mumbo jumbo? Right. 
So welcome, brothers and sisters, all the positive, righteous, intention people around the world. Welcome to the 300th episode of the Network of Awareness. And uh, let's get a little amp clap for that and a little celebration to follow up. Okay, and now coming on to the mic and to the show, I'd like to welcome my queen, Letta Lou. Hey, hey everyone. Love. Shalom, everyone that's in the um, chat room. Hope everything is well with y'all today. And how are you doing today? I'm doing great. And how are you doing today? Today's been a real emotional day for me. I came off of a 48-hour fast in the past two days, which probably wasn't the wisest thing to do during a work week and get, having to get a lot of things done. I feel like it uh, hindered my usual getting stuff done uh, routine because I'm working on a lot of projects for people. Some of them are in this chat room. And speaking of that, um, I want to say peace and forever favors to a couple of people here because this is a very important episode to me, people. Um, and I'm going to try to keep myself, I'm going to try to keep my composure. I got the tears out early today. Um, but let's give shout outs to people here. Um, shout outs to, let's see, we got Sister Cherish. We got Sister Danita. Oh, wow. We got Yazun here today. Thank you, brother, for joining. Uh, shout outs to brother Mauricio, uh, Kyle. We also got Alkaline Jake, also known as Jacob. We got, uh, who else? So far, that's it. Did I miss anybody? And shout outs to all the people that are listening in, but are not in the chat room. Because I know there's always uh, several of you that can't, for whatever reason, if you're driving at work, thank you. And peace and forever favors for those that are going to be uh, downloading the show throughout the weeks to come um, and after this broadcast is over. Furthermore, um, things are coming along very well with the setup of networkofawareness.tv and uh be on the lookout for that because we're looking to launch June 1st. And um, that's going to be my TV network on Roku and on the internet. So if you don't have Roku, you can still watch everything off the internet by putting a uh, network of awareness TV website into your browser. And you'll be able to have access to all of the content that's going to be on my TV network. Now, this is not something that um, I'm by myself. I got my brothers with me that I support and that I'm helping them build their brands and their talents and skills and helping them to get their voices out like I do on the network of awareness. So now what I'm doing for my brothers is Brother Oxacod is going to have Alpha Talk Series website on my network. So he's going to have his own podcast website, which he will be informing people on, which will be um, combined under my network of uh, websites for podcasts. Um, take one is going to have RighteousRapAcademy.com. That will be launching very soon. And that will be his website for his podcast. As well as those two brothers that I just mentioned will be on networkofawareness.tv. So what we will be doing is we're going to have individual subscriptions 
to specific content from each of us individually that will be priced um, in a range of anywhere from, we haven't figured it out, but it's going to be anywhere from $2.99 to $4.99. And then we're going to have the premium content, which will be all of us collectively together, where you can watch all of us as an entire network as a premium subscription for $9.99. And as well as the shows that I will be featuring on there. So it won't just be podcast shows where I get to let off and I get to let loose with no censorship. So I'm going to go deep into a lot of things that I've been kind of falling back from just because of the censorship and shadow banning that I've received for the past year that has really affected me psychologically and I had to overcome that. But also, I'm going to have other content on the TV channel, as well as Take One, as well as Oxycod. And a lot of the content will be evolving. But I'll be doing breakdowns on movies. Um, eventually, I'm going to have my own documentaries when I have uh, certain equipment that I'm going to be using. But for right now, um, there will be the Popcorn and Shenanigans show on Network of Awareness TV. And that's basically going to be a show dedicated to breaking down movies, movies from the past and from the present. And I'm going to give in-depth spiritual eye to these movies so that I can show you what a lot of people miss in the themes of these shows and movies that it goes over the subconscious, I mean, over the conscious mind into the subconscious. So there's going to be a lot of content like that. And there's also going to be music videos as well as just content that we don't even know yet, as well as featured content on the premium channel where we're going to have in-depth discussions um, on the show, on the TV channel between myself, Oxakai, and Take One, and then other guests that we will welcome onto those discussions and panels. So there's going to be a lot that we have to offer and it's going to slowly but surely evolve in the content in which the content is distributed, meaning that we're going to keep adding on more, but we're going to keep creating more ideas for shows and content. So it's going to be a plethora of righteous, spiritual, conscious, content. And as well as the fact that when it comes to Oxakai and Take One, they're evolving in their production, right? So we're working on Oxakai to get his Logic Pro X in order. But right now, Take One and I now are on the same page, right? Because I was always waiting for Take One to get Logic Pro X. Well, he's got it now. So now it makes things a hell, of, a hell of a lot easier. And there's going to be a lot of music coming out in the future, not just from myself and Take One and Oxaca, but a lot of collaborations because this is the time where we have to stick together. All right? So I just want to give you guys an update and um, I'm very, very excited, you know? And um, as my brother Take One, and thank you, um, Yazan, for reminding me, uh, this is the 300th episode, so you know we got to show love to the 300 Spartans. Let's go. There's no room for softness, not in Sparta. No place for weakness. Only the hard and strong may call themselves Spartans. Only the hard, only the, hard, only the, hard, only the strong, only the strong, strong, strong. Even the king allows himself to hope for more than glory. Such mad hope. But there it is. Against Asia's endless hordes, against all odds, we can do it. We can hold the hot gates. We can win. We winning. We winning. 
And I want to make a public service announcement to all you haters that have been trying to interfere with the progression of what I got going on in, in everything I do and in certain aspects of what I do. And I'm going to tell you right now, and I hope you're listening, I'm not the one, the two, or the three, but I might be the four if you want me to give it to you raw. And I will. I won't sugarcoat it, and I'm not the one. So if you want to keep playing games, keep playing the games, but don't overstep your boundaries and don't get too out of pocket because you'll get knocked the, you know, what out. So now that I made that pu public service announcement to those that needed to hear it, let's talk about we've come a long way, right? So with that being said, the picture that you see here, give me one second, folks. Let me move my mic here. The picture that you see here, this is my nephew that I love dearly. It's my first born nephew through my uh, sibling, my sister, my oldest sister. And uh, watched them, you know, after my sister gave birth, held my nephew in my arms. And uh, he was a big supporter of my music and just as an uncle, me being an uncle to him. He, uh, he looked up to me a lot. And, uh, unfortunately he passed away in, um, in 2013, uh, to suicide. And, um, it's something that has really changed the dynamic of my family, of my immediate family, when it comes to my siblings and my family as a whole. Uh, but it is what it is. Right. And, I can only hope that he's, you know, traveling the spirit realm and being protected and, and learning the lessons that he needs to learn based upon what he, you know, did here and how he left here. But what I could, but I can tell you is that ever since I started doing music uh, uh, again with the brothers and the sisters in this truth, I feel like he's with me. Not that he's looking upon me or anything, but his spirit is ingrained in my spirit. We are connected. He's my nephew and he's always going to be with me. And every, do you know, when I did my hundredth episode, I did a remembrance show for my cousin that passed away when I was 18. And this one I've been procrastinating on because I've been wanting to do this for a while, but I didn't know if I can emotionally handle the, the, just the, the overwhelming feeling of not having him around anymore. So I got that out of my system, people. So I, I promise you I won't be having any breakdowns. And if I do, for some reason, I have my queen here that has my back, right? Um, yes, for you. So let, a, let me ask you a question. Um, We've come a long way, and I'm not just talking about you and I. I'm talking about just in our journeys, right? Right. Um, what is it that you are, when you look back retrospectively and you kind of spend time on retrospection on where you was and how you were to where you've come to now, what is it that stands out the most to you in, in this journey up to this point? Part of that was, I'm just going to give people a little, a little background on myself. Not, not too much. I'm not going to elaborate completely on it, but I came from like a, a place of hurt and pain. And I got pregnant when I was 16 years old. So that was kind of like, stressful and really a bad time and being 16 and pregnant and, you know, not knowing what's going to happen and what's going to evolve from that and having my mom and my dad tell me to, you know, get out of the house and two women can't raise, you can be in a whole, in the same household and for me to get put out at 16 and being pregnant. But just luckily I had a good, support system at the time for at least 
giving me a place to stay and kind of providing me with minimum resources. So those are like some challenges, me coming up, being 16, being scared, not knowing what was going to happen to me and my baby and having my mom and my dad kick me out at 16 years old. And I'm having to somewhat navigate my life and make changes, you know, and modifications to my life. You know, I didn't, I didn't, and I didn't expect to get pregnant at 16. You know, you're, you're doing things that's not necessarily productive for you and in your best interest, but things happen. But to have your mom and dad like to kick you out of the house because you got pregnant and not really show too much support at a time when you really need them, um, it's hard. And I have done some things in life that I'm not so proud of, but I got through the adversity I pray and, you know, uh, the power of, you know, of the most high is just so, so powerful. And it's like when you're, rather you're grieving, rather is a loss of, you know, your, your, your loved one, or rather is a loss of a support system, or it's just a loss of love and, and, and nurturement from a parent, um, like with myself and as well as with yourself, with your um, nephew and your loss. It's a very hard, challenging thing to deal with. And um, it's kind of hard to like navigate your, your life through it as well. But, and that's like kind of like a snippet of what I went through in my life where I had to basically change my perspective, change how I see myself. And, and also another intimate part of my life too, is being like a um, being a part of like a situation where I had some cousins that did some things that really not to my benefit, and me having to like also deal with that. And at one point in my mind, I wanted to like literally take my life too, but I used prayer and I had had a lot of resources from a lot of unlikely people, friends were treating me better than my family. They were there for me. And strangers was there for me before anybody else. And to have to, to deal with that and go through all of that, it's just a very hard process. And it's like, you don't, you just, you appreciate people helping you along the way. Cause you never know when, where your help is going to come from. You never know when your resources are going to come from. And if you can be there for someone else in their time of need through grieving through a suicide or suicide situation or grieving through them losing a parent, losing a family member or anything, just be there for them. Just, I know it's going to be awkward at first when you're trying to reach out and help people and you may not necessarily know the things to say, but just having an open mind and an open ear and listening to them and just kind of pick up on the signs when somebody's suffering from anxiety and depression. It goes a, a long ways. Just being there, just being a, a listener, sometimes just listening to them and understanding their perspective and how they're trying to navigate their way through life really makes a, a whole lot of difference. And just provide them with a lot of emotional support. Because sometimes people are too scared to even voice their concerns of how life is just, it's hard. It's a struggle. And then especially with things that's going on today with this pan pandemic is really going to stretch a lot of people's minds, bodies and souls in a place that they never would want to be. We have inflation. They're worried about if they're going to have a place to stay. Um, they have food shortages with formula with the babies and feeding their babies. And it can be a very stressful time for people in this world today. And if we can just stick together, provide people with spiritual support, um, and navigate yourself around and, and surround yourself around with like-minded individuals that have just as much as strength and maybe more strength than you to help you get through the day. It makes a, a whole bit of a difference. So that's my perspective on in my experiences that I have went through and how I, I learned how to navigate myself through it. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing that. I'm going to read the poem that I uh, pulled from the internet. It's by Tori Kane, um, Tony Kane. And um, it's the one that I have posted next to my nephew's uh, picture. 
And by the way, people, my nephew died at 26 years old. All right. Very, very short life, in my opinion. And um, it's, it's just crazy. You know, it's some it's a little surreal that I'm doing this show, but everything happens for a reason and everything operates in the most highest time. And I felt the compelling in the spirit that this was the perfect time as my 300th episode to do this. So it says for a dearly loved nephew, a nephew's eyes have gone forever. His smile, his laugh, his face, where once he stood before us, a lone pitcher takes his place. Gone too soon, a fine young man, from here, your place of birth, I can't believe. That this is real, that you no longer walk this earth. Reality is, I know it's true. But still, I can't believe a fine young man with so much life, really had to leave. We love you from the time of birth. We watched you grow and learn. My nephew, we shall meet again when it's our time to return. So I will be returning to my nephew somehow, some way to Julian Thaddeus Harley. So with that being said, brothers and sisters, um, it's been a long journey to get to the point where I'm at now. And one of the things that set me on a trajectory of peace, love, understanding, understanding, overstanding, and having great patience was my nephew's death. Because when my nephew died, I stopped watching sports. Something like happened to me where after he died, I started seeing frequencies and vibrations. I wasn't even seeing reality like most people see it. I was stuck in this like how Neo could see the matrix. And it happened to me when I was at my sister's house. And I remember ESPN was on. It was a blur. It was a blur to me. And I stopped gravitating to things that really served no purpose in my life. Things that were more of a waste of time because it was part of this worldly world of things. Now, if you're somebody that's into sports, I don't want you to take this as a knock. But for me, it just wasn't something that was important to me anymore. So much so that I was always a mixed martial arts um, fan or admirer. And I still am to a certain degree for my own purpose, uh, personal purpose. When it comes time to have to choke, you know, a person out like I've done in the past or maybe have to try to take somebody out as quick as possible in these trials and tribulations that we're going to have to go through in the spiritual warfare that will be physical. But even with the UFC, like I don't even watch it no more. I watched an episode... Uh, not too long ago for the first time after like five or six months. And I'm kind of shocked that that happened. But when my nephew passed away, something happened to me. And it was like a whirlwind of emotions that set me on this trajectory to where I started to realize at that point, like I really started looking at my life, like, what are you doing? And what happened with me was that I got caught up in the emotional whirlwind of my daughter and her mother and all of the baby mama drama that I experienced for 18 straight years. And after the 14th year, I thought I was in the clear because I got full custody of my daughter, only to find out that those 14 years, there was a lot of things that were going on that I was unaware of and that was kept secret for me. So by the time I got my daughter, I had somebody that was emotionally messed up and decided that my daughter decided that she was going to take out all of the anger that she had towards her mother out on me and use me as the scapegoat. 
And I tried everything in my power to circumvent and overcome that and try to get her to a better place. But I was unsuccessful. And ever since I've detached myself from my child, which was probably one of the best things I have ever done for myself, and of course from her mother, which I was already detached from her for a long time, I felt like it's time to move on. So once I sent my daughter back to New Jersey, um, life got better. And then what I did from that point on is I cut off two very close friends to me for over 23 years. Friends that I did a lot of music with, that I built a lot with, that I've done things with, that were inspirational, motivational, uh, conscious, you know, all types of stuff. And when I cut those friends off, right after that in 2019 and 2020 is when I started the Network of Awareness in June of 2020. I actually started in January, but I literally, from January to June, I would re record an episode on the Spreaker app and I would delete it. Do it, delete it, do it, delete it. I had a free account. And then finally, I did my first 15 minute episode, which is the very first episode that you guys see on the network of awareness. And that was in June. And then there, from there, I built momentum. And now here we are. From that point till now, we do 300, we're at our 300th episode amongst the other episodes that I have that are premium, you know, with my subscription, uh, podcast and also, uh, my um, Passion Pursues Purpose episodes, which is only a few. So I have more than 300, but on this particular network, on this particular podcast radio show, this is the 300th episode. And I'm so grateful for that because we've come a long way, people. And I wanted to share my story as I always do, because I'm pretty transparent. I don't say, I don't tell everybody on, you know, I'm, I don't, spill all the beans about my life on this show because there's just certain things that you have to keep to yourself and there's certain things that the most high wants me to keep to myself. I have to be, I have to be uh, disciplined with that. And I have been, there's a lot of things I don't say that nobody needs to know, but I take it to as far as I possibly can when it comes to being transparent. And this episode today is one where I get to share it with my queen that many of you have known before I got to know her through the chat rooms and stuff. And I got to give a shout out, of course, to Yash Kara because, and to, to his wife, Navia Kara, but more to Yash because it was on his platform where we actually met. And, um, it's, you know, it was, it was, a. Uh, a courting process that now has gone to the level where it's now a commitment that we now know that we end this to win this together. I've come a long way because as many of you know, I haven't been in a, any serious relationship for over 10 plus years. So now that I'm in a serious relationship, I feel like spiritually I'm ready. And the Most High favored me with a woman that checks off all the spiritual boxes, so to speak. And that's why she's on this show, because one of the things that I used to pray about was that I wanted to have a woman in my life that is going to support what I'm doing 110%, which I have that now. And this is only the beginning, people. It's only the beginning. And I'm sharing this with y'all to let y'all know that your prayers are important. Your visions of how you perceive your life to be in the future or how you want it to be are important. Hold on to that. Build on that. Mentor it. Nurture it on a consistent basis because the universe is going to bring these things into your life the more you put emphasis on it. But the most high is only going to give you enough for you to appreciate it, but it's going to get even harder once you get it, because now you not only have to appreciate it, 
but you have to put in the work through faith to make sure that you sustain it. And I want to be very clear on that because even though I'm in a relationship, doesn't mean that it's just going to be all peaches and cream because it has to be effort consciously, faithfully to make it work. And I'm going to say this again. I said it before. If you don't have the most high as the foundational piece to your relationships, your relationships will not last. That's just a fact. The most high has to come first. And the most high has to be the foundation that you build from. And I'm grateful to say that that's what I'm doing. So it's, it's one of these things where I'm so grateful, right? Because I talked about the attitude of gratitude. I'm so grateful that I've have all these things in my life right now. And what's crazy about it is that this, this, these last four or five years, or really actually the last two years, um, since I started the podcast, even since the pandemic started, and ever since I quit my marketing uh, director position with an insurance company, money's been thin, man. It is what it is. And I'm not saying that for people to be like, oh, you know, let's feel sorry for Aura because he's broke. Yes, I may be broke in the sense like I don't have the same amount of spending money that I once had when I was working for the man. But what I do have now, and that's, that's going to change where I'm going to be content with what I'm doing with my business to get myself to a nice financial place for as long as it could last, right? Because with the way things are going, we might not have an economy in the next couple of years. So I'm not really focusing on money, but I only brought it up to say that in my lowest uh, financial means or however you want to call it, I've never been more in content with life. Why? Because I'm focusing on the spiritual aspect of life. Because when it comes to spirituality, that's all that matters because everything is based on perceptions and we are experiencing nothing but illusions. And we perceive these illusions, illusions as real. But if we were to really see how the world operates with the universe, everything is just fields of energy and vibration. But what I also want to say is that the most high makes no mistakes. So the more you put out righteous intentions and you have that faith and you put in that work with your faith to the most high and you give your homage and you give your praise, the most high is going to favor you and the most high is going to bring you to great places to where it will be overwhelming, but not overwhelming to where you can't do nothing. It's going to be overwhelming to want to inspire you to continue to live that type of, it's a never ending process, especially within the physical. This is a, this is an episode that I want to, I want to focus on overcoming loss, like how I had to overcome the loss of my nephew. And see, the thing with my nephew was he went into the military. Now he had some things he was struggling with before. But I think when he went into the military, into the Navy, that really did a number on him. And by the time he got out, he only lasted about a year or two. And it's unfortunate what happened, but everything happens for a reason. So as much as I hated the fact that this happened and it made me angry for a long time, the Most High revealed to me that this was, this was meant to happen to serve me, believe it or not. And it's serving other people in my family, like my nephew's brother, my other nephew and his sister and, and, and my sister, his mom, and even his father who wasn't even in his life and his stepfather who was and all the other people in my family. Every, it's affected everybody in my immediate family individually and collectively and his death has put everybody that I've mentioned on a whole different trajectory. And I'm not going to say that it's all positive, 
or that's all negative, but it is what it is. And I'm doing the best that I can and learning from that loss to now be in a state of gratitude to say, wow, man, I could look back now from that point to where I'm at now. And it's like, wow, there's a lot of forward progression. There's a lot of, a lot of awakening, a lot of enlightenment to the fact that I've gotten closer to appreciating the most high now more than ever. And it was listening to, to brothers like Yash at that time, they got me through the rage. And I say this because brothers and sisters, it's very important to not allow devils and demons and Satan and the people that uh, Satan sends your way to try to get you off course. And I'm not going to bring it up, but there's, there's something that happened recently and I'm not going to say what happened, but it was, you know, it was Satan trying to knock me off course to try to get me to turn into the person that I used to be and get me to get into that rage and to get, you know, stupid and ignorant and, and want to hurt somebody or hurt some bodies. But because like my queen told me earlier today, that if I do that, all of the favor that I'm being given on a consistent basis with all the people that have been brought into my life and with all the opportunities that I've been given as of present day, I'm going to throw it all away for somebody that means nothing, for somebody that has nothing. So why give my energy to that person? And I paid heed to the message that was delivered through her. And it also came at a time where this episode was already pre-planned. And then the things that have happened since I planned it is giving me more to talk about, to put emphasis on, on why it's so important to really get out of your own way and allow Yahweh and allow the, the most high, our great creator of that which is and always will be to guide you. Don't think that you are guiding yourself. I think a lot of times the ego, the ego, let me tell you something. The ego is very powerful. It's so powerful that it will make you think that it doesn't exist within you when it really does. And you'll think you're, you, you could think that you're moving righteously, but you're really operating from the ego. And Satan loves the ego, loves him. Loves the ego. The ego is so deceptive. And if you remember in the movie, Devil's Advocate, when Al Pacino was like, you think you're so effing good, right? Because you want all those cases on your own. But he was guiding that way. And Keanu Reeves, who was playing the character as his son, the, the attorney, Realized like, oh, wow, it was. I, I was all in my ego thinking I'm the man. But meanwhile, I wasn't even the one that's really winning those cases. Those cases were given to me through, this, the, the, through the blessings of Satan. So I say all that to be appreciative of what you have, what you got going on, and continue to give your praise. And don't allow anybody to distract you because honestly... The people that I've cut out of my life is the very reason why I am here today on this microphone in my studio, all right, in good health, 44 years old, and I, I'm telling you, I'm like, I'm in a place right now where it's like, I'm not feeling myself, but I am vibrating at a very high level these days. Spiritually, like I'm feeling a sense of contentment that I've never felt before in my entire life. And it's because I've been very disciplined and not for settling for less than not only what I want, but not settling for less than what the most high has intended and wanted for me to achieve with the gifts that have been given. So with that being said, do you have anything you want to say on that? Because I, I know I gave like a long-winded speech on that. But do you have anything you want to include on what I was just talking about? 
Um, yeah, I want to elaborate on it. Is, is you like you never know how strong you are until you meet adversity. You never know how strong you are until you actually make a spiritual connection with with the Most High, and that's like very very important. Like to constantly connect with Him because distractions and things come out of the come out out of nowhere, and you have to just be you know spiritually prepared, not just physically prepared. It's all right to have your sword, your sword, your seals, you know, have all the your physical part of the protecting yourself, but you have to protect yourself spiritually as well, and. It just is a very hard process. I know it's not easy because in my line of work that I do, I see a lot of people that are in a lot of despair, a lot of depression, a lot of anxiety, and they just don't have anyone to talk to. So whenever you have someone that you can talk to, a confidant, you know, hold on to those types of experiences and those types of people because that goes a long ways. And it's like, never be afraid to, you know, reach out, talk to people, that are like-minded that can help you out with your situation. Cause that's what I had to do at first. Most of the people that helped me along the way, they were not family. They were not friends. They were like just brief encounters with people that I didn't know that's going to like help me with the process of how I can think better, eat better, feel better and connect myself better to the most high. Like you just never know where an, an unlikely source might come in and actually help things resonate in your life and help navigate your way and transition yourself. Because if it wasn't for a lot of people that I met along the way when I was 16 and pregnant and got kicked out of the house, I got touched by my cousins for like three and four and five years and nobody even cared. No one believed me and no one understood me. And I had to experience all of that. And I just met people, strangers along the way that actually helped me get a place to stay, helped me with food, helped me with my baby, um, helped me with school, helped me with a whole lot of things. And it's like, it's temptation is like, even I was tempted whenever I was even taking care of my child at a young age and to go out more in the streets, you know, go to club and get drinks. And I had periods of anxiety and depression. I drunk a lot. I went club a lot. I did a lot of things that I'm not so proud of, but it made me the person I am today where I can take things and say, I can change. I can be a better version of myself. I can go to the most high with things and I can have people help me along the way, you know, accept that help because I was the type of person I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I want to do it all. I want to make sure I do everything. I want to make sure everything is right. I want to make sure everything's perfect and it's, it's structured and be calculated. But sometimes calculations are off. And sometimes in life, you can't go on your own calculations. You have to go on calculations of the most high. Cause at the end of the day, he's going to, he's going to guide you. He's going to, he's going to give you what you need in the long run. So with that being said, it's like, that's just, just hold on to your faith, hold on to and be strong and be encouraged and never be afraid to talk to anyone about anything that you're going through. Because when you learn how to release that physically, you allow things spiritually to start manifesting in your life. And that's, that's all I have to say on the, on the matter. I concur. <laughs> um, <laughs> and let's not forget enthusiasm, man. I did a show on enthusiasm on uh, Passion Pursues Purpose as well as um, Network of Awareness. And enthusiasm, people, is powerful. You'd be surprised how powerful the universal principle of enthusiasm and where that can take you. So be enthusiastic. Try it out if you haven't. And if you're doing it, keep on building on that enthusiasm because that enthusiasm goes a long way. And I'm, I'm very enthusiastic. I think I was born enthusiastic, to, to be honest, because... Enthusiasm really transforms things for you. So I wanted to add that to what Letta was saying because everything else she said and add that to it and you're going to be just fine. I see that the chat room is popping and appreciate everybody that's in here. In the last uh, 
several weeks. We've had the chat room just lit, and it's a beautiful thing to see. Um, I want to say something to Brother Yazan. Keep it that way, brother. Don't don't get caught up. Just let let the most high take care of those people. Trust me. When I was 15 years old, okay? And this is one of the reasons why I like to nip things in the bud and not let things linger, especially when it comes to these haters, when it comes to these real simp betas, beta men that act like 14-year-old girls on the internet. And only out of respect for certain people that I made promises to, I'm not going to mention names and all that stuff. And I'm not going to, you know, go into it. But I bring it up because when I was 15 years old, and some of you already know this, who are avid listeners of this show, I was set up to get killed, literally, at 15 years old by one of my best friends. And it was on Christmas Eve of 19, it was in 1992 or three. I think it was 93. I was set up to get killed on Christmas Eve at 1130 at night, walking back home with my friend. And I think we went to a weed spot or wherever. And then my friend caught up with me with some people and they had, they were waiting for me around the block. And he said peace to me and told me, oh, your mom is, you know, waiting for you at the house. She was worried about you because his grandmother and my mother were best friends. And I was like, oh, good looking. And next thing you know, there's a dude waiting for me on the corner, my friend. And then another, other, some other dude popped up. And long story short, I didn't get killed that day. The Most High was definitely with me, protecting me. But the reason I say that to you, Brother Yazan, is because what happened was I didn't do nothing to the friend. I was going to murder him with another friend. And my brother stopped us on, on, the, on the way out the door. And my brother had said something where he said, let God take care of it. He said, he's not going to see past the age of 18 years old. And when my brother took the gun out of my friend's hand. And I have a picture of that day. Letter, you seen that picture on my, um, I, I think I shared that with you. Where I got my little peach fuzz on my face. But yes. fast forward, he saw me uh, when we was 17. He came to my house unexpectedly with his dog. He tried to mate his dog that he had with my dog, but my dog wasn't feeling him. My friend was in my room. My stepfather was home. My stepfather let him in, gave him some apple juice. We went to the backyard, tried to have the dog's mate. Didn't work. I didn't say nothing to him, trifling, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, what he did to me, I just kind of let let him come and talk to me and be cool. But in, deep down inside, he knew that I wasn't feeling him. And two weeks later, they found him hanging from a ceiling fan in uh, Stapleton Projects, where the Wu-Tang is from, because he used to roll with... Um, a couple of the Wu-Tang members, like, you know, hustling krills and all that stuff. And uh, he's dead now, you know. And I don't, it's not that I wish for him to be dead, even though I wanted to do it myself. And I'm so grateful to the Most High that I didn't. But that situation made me realize that it's important, like my brother said, to let the Most High handle things. It's not our place. And that's where faith comes in heavy because if you don't have faith in the most high, that the most high is in control of all that is and will be, then you're going to get distracted. You're going to get off your game and you're going to start giving attention, which is really giving energy to people that are, that don't deserve it. They just really want to get you off your game. And they want to see you fall. They want to see you not do well and not succeed in the things that you have going on with you. So it's very important to, to be circumspect and to just be fully, fully self-aware and socially aware and universally aware that your life has purpose and meaning and it doesn't 
have to be the the energy that you're giving to that is more important than giving it to some girl that's hating on you or some dude. You know, like it's 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 funny to me sometimes. I gotta laugh it off because deep down inside the ego is gonna tell you like I want to hurt this dude or I want to smack this you know this chick. I want to put them in their place. I want to I want to nip things in the bud right. Because I don't like things to linger. But there's just certain things that it's not that you're letting it linger. It's that you're not giving it no energy. And let the most high take care of these people. Because they're two turds. They're not two thirds. They're two turds. They, they're minuscule. They're meaningless. You know? And you know this, this little clip that I like to play from that I just recently started playing from Snowfall. And this is what I have to say to a lot of you haters. And guess what? I'm at my 300th episode and I'm going to do 300 and then another 300 until I can't do it no more. And so this is what I have to say. All right? I built this shit. Me. Brick by brick. And I'll be damned if I let you tear it down just because you don't like the way another nigga talk, 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 talk. Well said. Because at the end of the day, man, a lot of these haters, man, they don't want to see you succeed. And you've come a long way, brothers and sisters. Understand that. It's not a, it's not a, a coincidence. It's more of a, of a purposely driven, meaningful coincidence that we are here connecting today and that and how we've connected in the past and how we're going to be connecting in the future. Because we are all spiritually connected, whether we like it or not. But when you are self-aware of the spiritual connection that you have with people, it can take you to places that you've never been to before and have an experience in this entrenched, enslaved world that we live in, this prison planet that Satan runs amok on. You can find peace and joy and contentment in the in this cursed land called the United Shenanigans or Serpents of America. And I'll be honest with you, the more and more as time passes with all this inflation and the pandemic and the science appliance and the, and the stupidity and the, and the ignorance in the music in Hollywood and all of the just demonic stuff that's just steadily increasing at astronomical levels. No reason to be worried at all. That's a fact. Because the Most High has got it all locked down. And as long as you keep you, your faith and put the work, I'm telling you, man, if it wasn't for my faith in the Most High and giving the Most High's praise in the, in the manner in which I've been doing, I wouldn't made it to, to no 300 episodes, man. I'm not, I wouldn't be there. And if I would have, if I would have took out my ex-friend, I would have been in jail. I probably would have just been getting out now. I would have been diesel as hell, not knowing how to use a cell phone. Maybe done some things in prison where I had to take people out just to keep my booty safe. Because when I thought I was going to jail for 10 years, I told my mother straight up, don't come visit me because I'm going to turn into a demon just so that I don't get raped. But I'm grateful that none of these things happened because the Most High was with me. You know what I mean? And shout outs to Brother Take One. Shout outs to, um, who else we got in chat? Mystic Royale. Shout outs to Brother Kevin, the dynamic duel, Mystic and uh, Kevin, right? And their holy matrimony. Shout outs to Brother Cook and Allura Beauty Abundance. Shout outs to uh, who else came in here that I didn't get to say what's up to. I think that's it, right? And shout outs to Danita too. I don't think I said what's up to you, sister. If I did, you know, shout outs to you twice. But I say all of this to be like, man, stay on course. Stay on course with what you got going on righteously. Because we can't, 
be in a state of mind where we're practicing all the laws and statutes, not in this cursed land. That takes time to get to that level. And we're not in the days of antiquity, but we could do the best we can with what we have. And that's enough because it's a lot better than what most people in today's society are doing. Most people in today's society, they are worried about what other people think about them. And you'd be surprised how the two thirds operate like that. That's why they are the two thirds. It's not even just because they don't have any respect or love or admiration and reverence and, 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 uh, just overall fear of the most high and not doing what they're supposed to do. But it's also because they're so caught up in the ego. So they, the ego makes them believe that the worldly world of things is what's important. And if you don't have a college degree, or if you don't have a big house or the car with the big rings, then you ain't nobody, you know? If you're not sleeping with multiple people and all that, they, they look at you like you're a cornball or whatever it is. Like there's a lot of people that are stuck in the status quo mentality. And those that are spiritual people, meaning that they are truly learning and evolving and appreciating the fact that they are spiritual beings having a physical experience, their life from moment to moment is more meaningful than those that are living a life of just chasing the gold, chasing the money, chasing the image. That's the big one these days. It's all about image. Everybody wants to look like they're so damn important. Everybody want to look like they, like they, they got so much going on for themselves. But even when they have, even the ones that do have the big cars and got money and are splurging, they're very empty. Most of them, very empty. There's very few people that I've met, like a Robert Riopel, who's a millionaire and has got it all together and understands from a spiritual perspective that he's nothing, that all this money he got means nothing. Because what really matters is within his spirit. And I'm so grateful that the Most High has connected me with these great men and women that I've been able to interview, have them mentor me, uh, counsel me, and just share uh, meaningful experiences and conversations. So when you hear me say everything happens for a reason and that reason is there to serve you, I got that from Robert Riopel when I interviewed him. And it's it's... It's stuck to me like it's stuck to my ribs. You know what I'm saying? And just for the sake of the 300 episode, um, I promise uh, take one that I would definitely pay heed to the message of doing these. Um, give me one second here. Getting a little feedback. Doing these 300 clips. So let's play this other clip real quick. A new age has begun. An age of freedom. And oh no, the 300 Spartans gave the last breath to defend us. Spartans, what is your profession? Let's take a quick intermission. Let's go. You are now tuned in to the network of awareness. To the network of awareness. To the network of awareness. Let's stay to that. For one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell our enemies. That they may take our lives, but they'll never take. But they'll never take. Freedom! 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 Freedom!
switch the paradigm. Yours truly, Alton, Tyler J, Lawrence, into the WB, and to the Y. Seven stage, salute, we prime time. You ain't ever gonna find a network this live. When it's said and done, what would you leave behind? What kind of legacy would you leave for others to find? This ain't a game, this is real shit. Tone down for what? I'm too lit and legit to quit. But don't twist it up, I'm still humble hearted. Putting others first is what I strive to accomplish. I do this music for one third, I do it for y'all. Can't serve two masters, either you is or you not. That's why until I got my rope on, I can't stop and won't stop. I gotta keep the laws first, so miss me with the poke chops. Gotta keep it clean, I gotta keep the righteous. Gotta fight until the bitter end, like James Tillis versus Tyson in 86. The little ones, I can't never lead them astray. I cannot betray them. They're the ones who make me who I am. Thanks to y'all, music they can't wait to drop. I got it cooking in the kitchen, stirring up a bit of pot. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for a ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. Skills I have acquired over a very long career. Skills I hardly that ever say much, like but they do whatever I, like I, say. I, say. I, say. I say. Every time I pull up in a driveway, she be like, oh my Yahweh. 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 I hardly ever say much, but they do whatever I say. But they do whatever I say. Yeah. Every time I pull up in a driveway, she be like, oh my Yahweh. Hopscotch on your planet. Why you all up in my space? I hardly ever say much, but they do whatever I say. Every time I pull up in the driveway, she be like, oh my Yahweh, hopscotch on your planet, why you all up in my space? All these battles that I face, which I go proceed at a high rate, I watch them migrate and hide, cause when I rap I really hydrate, catch a wave while you thugging out, and God is a woman, she love me, wow, make you spark your inner Noah's Ark, I got a flow that will flood your house, every day is celebration. Roll it up, no hesitation Sativa, I got from Shiva Guarantee it for the elevation There is love in the air Release the ether, watch it linger Middle fingers in the air If you got a middle finger I have to let go of the past Cause I crave a better future Now my homegirl got an ass And she meditate like she Buddha She got the sauce like picante We got the sauce like BBQ We got the sauce like tomatoes Escape from hell like I'm Kratos I hardly ever say much, but they do whatever I say. I say, I say, I say, I say, I say. Yeah. Every time I pull up in the driveway, she be like, oh my Yahweh, hopscotch on your planet. Why you all up in my space? All these battles that I face, she fetty wop, she come my way. She swerved for me on the highway. I'm higher than life and God's ways. I'm trying to live, you a zombie. I pay my bills like I'm Cosby. I grind, kick, flip, and ollie. They witness how I be so gnarly. Back to the future like Marty. You're a slacker, McFly. My flow will approach your MK Ultra. I'm hacking your mind. Just let me be. Or be left behind. Better climb your ladder. My flow anti-matter. Vibrate through your spine.
Gotta keep obliterating the pavement Still remember that day on the phone mark He said, yo, take, don't you take your foot off the gas Always something to give y'all praises We're the dark oasis for countless cases A peak of faithless, I'ma need the patience Defeat the chases, we seek his graces For true salvation, we keep embracing We go on blazing these revelations Teach the no old cases Good vibrations, we back to basics To build foundations, y'all defeat is Satan I done made mistakes on purpose To divide the worth from the worthless Reveal the facts to be certain No pain, no gain in the verses My faith been alive before churches Cause y'all is perfect I'm person, so I'm worried about complicated versions. Cause the call to divine divergence. I'm still hurting, so searching. Networking and murking. Anytime they can drop my curtain. With a spirit that city suburban. I'm seriously merging and physically working on my purpose. To lyrically service the mental mouth nourish until I perish. People pursuing acts of violence. Third persistent act of defiance. Freely forming a righteous alliance. Truly against the science appliance. On a mission with wisdom and guidance. Steady defeat in the ignorant science. Seely convicted in non compliance. Spiritual wars to move in Let's science. Let's talk about what matters. Drop the vanity, folks out here losing their sanity Kids popping off, lost in fantasies People grieving over loss of family The evil that be with the power Turning the people with creeds to cowards Seeking to seize believers with vows Many even Stevie can see that it's foul I done made mistakes on purpose To divide the worth from the worthless Reveal the facts to be certain No pain, no gain in the verses My faith been alive before churches Cause y'all is person to person So I'm worried about complicated versions Cause the call to divine divergence I'm still hurting, so searching Networking and murking Anytime they can drop my curtain with a spirit that city suburban I'm seriously merging and physically working on my purpose to lyrically service the mental mouth nourish until I perish depression gone with every song music led by another echelon to get you strong keep pressing on long after we dead and gone from dust till dawn we're righteously armed with spiritual lessons from Yah we where we belong we keeping on the righteous with third is Zion Records embellished with heavenly eloquence. Elohim's presence presently evident. Intricate elements, infinite intelligence. Spiritual specimens, lyrically resonant. The people's inheritance, smaller percentages. Can't believe measured and meant to be shared. With the message projected, cemented, embedded. The sensible, sensible question is, is what would you give from it? I made mistakes on purpose to divide the worth from the worthless. Reveal the facts to be certain. No pain, no gain in the verses. My faith been alive before churches. Cause Yah is person on person. So I'm worried about complicated versions. Cause the call to divine divergence. I'm still hurting, so searching. Then working and murking. Anytime they can drop my curtain. With a spirit that city suburban, I'm seriously merging and physically working on my purpose to lyrically service the mental mouth nourish until I perish. Ever heard? Attitude reflect leaders. Attitude reflect leaders. Attitude reflect leaders. Attitude reflect leaders. Down, 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 it all comes. Down, down, down. It all goes left before it goes right But that's life, so you know how it goes, right? Tell you I done been through the mud and the dark nights Always had a flow, but I've been through the ball fights Not a big dog, but I got a big bite Always been fly, I've been known to take flight Learned all my lessons, never make mistakes twice Never dim my shine, cause I've always been bright Always been nice with the hands, so I know how to break a nigga down Just in case a nigga come around, I'm ready Once you get a nigga mental in that zone, I'm deadly That's why I prefer to be left alone You can't really tame a beast that is meant to roam Feast as long as my heart beats like a metronome Graduated from the streets with a cap and gown Even I know what goes up will come crashing down Down, 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 it all comes Down, 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 it goes all the way It goes all the way It goes all the way Crashing down, crashing down Have you hated or ever been hated on? Watch how I debate this while I go and play the song Am I wrong or am I right? While I'm writing, see it was written, ha I knock him out like I was Tyson Ain't no tie, son, I've been down, down 
See, I've been spitting for a minute. I am different. I'm the one. They say I'm gifted. I just want the big money to go and match the lyrics. Ha. And then you crash, burn, feeling like life cheated you from your last turn. Feeling like I was a bad sperm from the ex, bugging with the heat, yeah, mash burn. They notice the way I talk. I think they really hate me because they know I'm from New York. I had a lesson in court. I swear I made it a sport. A bronze nigga for sure. Spiraling down the fuck out of here. Down, 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 it all comes. Down, 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 it all comes. Down, 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 it goes all the way. It goes all the way. It goes all the way. Crashing down, crashing down. Kick them out like Pam, slam the door, never again let anybody in Trying to rob me of my energy, call them out suddenly, losing memory Hate it when you keep it real, know it's such a tough pill Gotta deal with the dildo where we living in, it's full of sheep Right there, can't even think, niggas weak, women street Everybody envy, everything, all likes, all views with no reality Everybody fake, claiming they awake, when's the last time you prayed? Or help somebody out when it wasn't for the clout yeah, I never make millions, my soul I never sell To get it, I praise to Yah Every single day I'm growing, hallelujah Separate myself from them No, I cannot quit Yeah, I gotta win Praise Yah till the end I'ma keep on working I'ma keep on grinding Every day I'm working Every day I'm praying, every day I'm grinding, chances that I'm taking, walking out on faith, yeah, fuck what they say, cause we winning, we winning. I praise to Yah, every day I'm praying, I praise to Yah, every single day I'm growing, hallelujah, walking out on faith, yeah. I praise to Yah. I praise to Yah. Every single day I'm growing. Hallelujah.
you tear it down just cause you don't like the way another nigga talk, talk, talk. for today I just can't really you know see the future you know I mean hopefully if I have more good days I'll rap you know more serene how you doing all my life I've been fighting to get to a place I belong I belong it gets hard I won't quit Cause I know the Lord's made me strong Made me strong I can't run, I can't hide Cause life is still gonna always be there All my life I've been fighting To get to a place I belong uh, I understand and I really get 
get it. I understand, everybody's different. I understand upbringings can be rough. Not everyone was raised with privilege. I understand everybody's cards are different. I understand everybody's got a mission. Your life wasn't even your decision. You were just stitched up, born, raised, and placed in this position. Sounds unfair, you didn't get a say. But Yahweh makes no mistakes. You might resent it, but your life plays a role in a big picture Yah has made. So whether you were raised, wealthy, or poor, there's no mistake as to why you were born. Don't be ashamed. So torn, learn to embrace that you're better than the norm. All my life, I've been fighting to get to a place I belong. I belong. It gets hard, but I won't quit. Cause I know the Lord's made me strong. Made me strong. Can't run, can't hide. Cause life is still gonna always be. Do it, gonna do it, gonna do it, gonna hear it. No, just that's bullshit because that's not what state of mind I'm in. So, if I be in a better state of mind, then yeah, but right now I'm just like all over the place. Everything that I say, it's never been a lie. All the pain I endure, it made me wanna cry. Cause it hurt deep inside. It pains me every day, it pains me every night. How much I gotta fight to keep myself alive? Can I take a break from shit in a minute? I just wanna lose it. I don't wanna live like this. Self sound much better. I could get out the way, no suicide. Somebody gotta take me. I'm a battle to the end. Guarantee never been a coward in this. Just fear is good to better pay attention. What I gotta say is something it. A lot of people cannot. I do this transparent, it's a different task to manage, spread it out to the planet, knows me on a personal tip, gotta be straight from the hip, from the hip to the darkness, I don't want a part of it, believe what I say, I want positive energy, never won't, I need a little bit of peace, yeah, I really want to show all 32 teeth, got a beautiful smile, it's been a while, I'm a really nice guy when I see you, high five, only thing keeping me calm when I praise ya, praise ya, when I praise ya. All my life, I've been fighting to get to a place I belong. I belong. It gets hard, but I won't quit. Cause I know the Lord's made me strong. Made me strong. Can't run, can't hide. Cause life is still gonna always be. saying that you're you know what I'm saying that your music is not um positive but I'm just making a point like the state of mind that you're in like as you're making this music you know instead of you know you know being always angry all the time which I mean like I said it's, it's in your right but still like being able to rap from a more positive state of mind like you know just more blissful you know what I mean and not so much I guess hurt and anger and so you know what I mean because like I said, at the end of the day, it's better for you, man. It's for your own, it's for your own benefit, it's for your own sanity. And uh, yeah, I think you, I definitely think you'll get there. You know, at some time point. Time will tell, my friend. Yeah. Only time will tell. Yeah. 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 Ye
positive people. You are now tuned in to the Network of Awareness podcast radio station, giving you in-depth information on society and culture in America and abroad with messages of inspiration, with keen insights, reputable interviews, and much more. So now, without further ado, your host of the Network of Awareness podcast, Aura, the informationalist. Life is an unpredictable and amazing journey. Our ever-changing conditions within today's society and the constant new trends influencing cultures can become overwhelming, to say the least. But no worries. The Network of Awareness podcast radio show brings peace of mind in these challenging times. Follow us on your favorite podcast listening app and join our community of Network of Awareness at networkofawareness.com. Yeah. So I hope you brothers and sisters enjoyed that uh, intermission of uh, music and instrumentals, right? So today's live broadcast for the Network of Awareness is the 300th episode. And we've come a long way, come a very long way. And we have such a long way to go, in my opinion, all of us, collectively and individually. And I'm just so grateful for all that has been given and for all the favors. That's why you always see me in chat rooms like forever favors, you know what I'm saying? And there's, you know, I can't spill the beans or anything, but I will say that Letta and I have something coming up to where uh, we're going to do something together that um, that's coming to the near future. So be on the lookout for that. Um, you'll know about it when it happens. And it's going to be happening soon. That's all I'm going to say. Um, and it's a really good thing that we're going to be doing this uh, because... Little by little, you'll see Letta on my network and having more of a presence as she gets more comfortable with, um, with just being on a podcast because it's not, it's not an easy thing to put your voice out there and say what you want to say or, or say anything for that matter. Do you realize, people, that most podcasters and YouTubers don't pass 10 episodes? from when they originally start. That is a, st- a statistical fact. A lot of people can't handle the, I'm not going to say pressure, but they just don't, it's, it's, a, it's a multitude of things. Sometimes they just don't have the content. They don't have the, the spiritual fortitude to see it through because a lot of times, People come into this just to make money or think they're going to become rich and famous on social media or whatever. So if you're somebody that's looking to do a podcast or or start some type of uh, channel or network, do it for the most high. Do it with a purpose that's not connected to something superficial. Do it with the purpose of doing something spiritual, serving a spiritual purpose to serve others and to serve the most high. And I guarantee you that whatever it is you start, it will stand and last the test of time. Um, what else we got here? I, I want to address some of the things in the chat room that are pretty interesting because I was, you know, I was scrolling through. Shout outs to brother Kyle. Uh, shout outs to brother Taji. That's who I forgot. I forgot you, Taji, before when I was giving salute to people. Um, let's see what we got here. Shout outs to Mystic. She said, you has been evolving gifts he's given me just from listening in and taking everyone's advice from my husband's advice to the righteous music on the podcast and praying I can help others the same way in his light. And you're absolutely right on that. And like I said earlier, if the most high is not the foundational piece to your relationships with your significant others, whether it be your girlfriends, 
the people you're getting to know, building a romantic relationship, or whether you're married, or even your, your friendships too. If the most high is not a foundational piece in those relationships, then those relationships don't have a strong foundation. And if anybody who understands construction and building and architecture, if the foundation is not strong, which if you ask any architect, the most important thing when building is your foundation. Because if your foundation is weak, everything is going to crumble. So if the most high is not the foundation, eventually that relationship, I don't care how good it is, it's not going to stand the test of time because it's not going to have the foundation and the spiritual awakening and protection and, and patience and allow the, the favor to be given to the communication with each other. It's just not, it's eventually going to fizzle out. That's why I don't believe for people to get married with a marriage certificate with a marriage certificate. Now, if you have a marriage certificate, it is what it is. But I don't believe in having the government be involved in our relationships. That's why you see the divorce rate so high. You know, as long as the most as long as you have a spiritual foundation and you get married, just get married spiritually. Do a ceremony. Give your praises to the Most High. Say your vows, you know, and ask the Most High to to honor and 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 give you the strength to uphold those vows between each other, and you're just fine, right? That's all it takes. That's all it takes. It's not that hard. And I always say that the Most High is within the simplicity of life. The Most High is simple. Because everything that we have here, just like how the animals operate, everything is very simple. Man and, and the demonic ways that of Satan infiltrating humanity is what brings complexity to our life. And then we start having complexity be the guiding force instead of simplicity. And I'm a true believer that less is always more. And that's a le lesson that I had to learn, that I'm still learning, present day. But I've gotten a lot better with it because less is more, people. Sometimes you don't got to do so much. You just got to do enough to serve whatever purpose you're trying to uh, uh, gain or accomplish or serve. Um, thank you, Letta. I just saw your... Um, your comment in the chat. And let me stop bogarting the mic because I've been talking a lot. Um, something I wanted to bring up with you is you, you and I talk a lot about how the Most High makes no mistakes. And I was wondering, because you have a lot of great um, awareness to this, about how certain things just come together when it's time for it to happen. Like, like the Most High is not going to give you what you want right then and there. But the Most High is always going to be on time to give you what you need once you're prepared. And also what you want if you truly put your faith and works to um, getting what you want. So can you give some some comments on that because I know that's something that you um, you focus on a lot in your life nowadays. Did I lose you? Oh, I did. I'm over here talking and I lost her on. The <laughs> All right. So we're going to wait for letter to come back. She, I guess she lost connection. There is, um, there's some bad weather there, but to elaborate on what I'm saying is that the most high makes no mistakes because sometimes you're thinking that because things are not going the way you want them, that things are messed up. But what it really is, is that the most high is preparing you to be able to receive those things when you're actually ready. So let me end this right here. Hold on one second, people.
Yeah, so we're having some technical difficulties here, but no worries. All right. So we'll wait for her to come back in. Matter of fact, all she got to do is hit that link. And we'll get her back in here. Let me take a quick little, let me just put one of my, one of my awakening beats on here. So, um, another thing I wanted to mention when it comes to my nephew, right, Julian, that you see in the picture for the uh, artwork. You know, I miss him so much, and um, it's one of those things where my nephew was a was a very smart kid. He had a lot going for himself. I guess he was dealing with certain things that he was struggling with, but he was his aura shined bright. You know, he had a, a very uh, beautiful spirit to him from a young age. And as he got older, I was very, and I'm even proud um, of, my, of my other nephew, his brother, um, Brandon, who's younger, and also my niece as well, Miranda. Proud of all of them because they got, they got good heads on their shoulders. And I think we have Letter back. Oh, my. And- Okay. And also my niece. All right, we can well. hear the the podcast in the background. Out of all, they got, they got good <laughs> heads on this. Okay, so Letta, once you turn that off, uh, come back to the broadcast because I wanted to ask a question. Um, I don't know if you got to ha- hear it. The question that I had asked earlier about how the Most High makes no mistakes, and I would know that's something that you are very aware of when it comes to how things come at the right time in our lives and how um, the Most High is going to give you things in your life once you're really, truly ready and prepared to receive it and be also to honor it once you get it and maintain it and cherish it and and appreciate it and and really um, have respect for it. So can you um, talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, It's like in my life right now, like what it was like 10 years ago versus what it is now. It's a whole different situation going on. It's like a lot of things that I wasn't looking for. It just came into play. It's like one being with my career in nursing. I didn't think I was going to actually go all the way with it. But it's like sometimes you run from something and then he brings you right back to it. Like I had no intentions of being in in nursing at the beginning, but he brought it to me and made my situation uncomfortable for me to be comfortable enough to accept that this is where my journey is going to begin. And this is where it's going to continue. Then on another aspect of it, what a job situation and a career move. I didn't think I was going to be leaving one type of career area into going into another area and see that I can bring a lot more things in fruition in reference to things moving forward in my life and doing things that's fulfilling and helping others. And then even with relationships, like with you, I didn't think that I was going to actually have um, 
someone that is spiritually connected with me, someone that's not judgmental, is understanding, and that's loving because I've never had any situations where or relationships where that was there. Like I've always been the one to, you know, in a sense, put more into it than what is uh, whatever I than what I got out of it. And it's like I'm spiritually connected with you in a higher particular level, you know, where it's like it's it's mind blowing. It feels so good. And and I'm enjoying the experience and I'm learning a lot of stuff from you, you know, day by day. And you're learning a lot of stuff from me and we're growing and we're strengthening our relationship with the most high together because that's what's more important. If you don't have the most high and you don't have things like that and using that, like you said, as a foundation, it's not going to work out. And you have to have that pretty much if it doesn't resonate with you it's not going to work out. And that's why you have to put him in the first and the for- foremost. And you also have to have it, whereas you have a, a greater understanding of yourself prior to going into a relationship with anything, even if it's a job, even if it's a career, if it's a, even a relationship as far as a person goes, you have to take time to be with yourself, like what you did. And I kind of took time to be with myself as well, to reevaluate my thought process, my perspective, perspective on things and to practice like better, like discernment and be circumspect about a lot of things in life because life is not easy. It's, it's, it's hard. And when you're walking with the word with, with Yah, it's not a a easy task. You're going to be tested. You're going to have a lot of distractions. You're going to have a lot of things that's going to come into the forefront. That's going to like distance you or some while can like condition you to like say, Oh, uh, it's getting hard. I'm, uh, that's not easy. It's not fun. It's boring. It's not exciting. But serving the Most High is not about an external situation. It's about an internal situation where you can have that transcend to your environment, transcend to people that are in your environment as well. So that's that's all I have to say on that on that matter. You know, in reference to what you asked. You know, um, I know for a fact that if. Julian, my nephew was still alive. He would have definitely, um, he would have liked you. You know, I think you two would have gotten along really, really well, for sure. Really well. And um, people all, you know, in regards to my, my nephew, you know, this is something that I, I've gotten better dealing with it in the sense that um, I've accepted it and I'm no longer, um, angry for what he did and the way he he left this world uh because suicide people it's uh it's, it's heavy man that that it's not an easy thing and when i was going to uh suicide um like uh you know how like they have aa meetings for alcoholics well my brother and i we were going to those types of meetings for people who lost family members and i'm telling you I went to like two meetings and I stopped because it was just like, it was painful. And not just because what I was experiencing at the time, but hearing all these other stories that were far, far worse than what I experienced. But I I bring this up because when it comes to suicide, it's like one of the things they say is that the people that truly suffer are the ones that are left behind especially when you don't know why they did it. It's not like when somebody leaves a letter. When somebody leaves a letter, they they kind of tell you what they were feeling at that time. So it gives you some, some peace of, of, of mind and gives you some closure, but it still hurts. But when you don't even know and they don't leave anything behind to kind of let you know what like made them do that, um, it becomes a, a battle of you start wondering what you could have did better. I started feeling like I should have did this as an uncle and I should have did that, you know, because my nephew would seek uh, counsel from me, spiritual counsel, and I would do the best that I could. But he was so smart that he knew 
that if he brought up anything in regards to something like this, that I would have been on it. I would have been on it and I would have been like, you know, very, very aware of, of his, you know, the moves he was making. But he was smart. He knew what to say around me or to me. So I was completely distraught when I, when I experienced this. So I, I say that to the people who have experienced suicide. I know Brother Yazan had made a comment earlier that his friend took his life in front of his mom's. And I can only imagine how that woman feels right now. And it's, it's sad for anybody to do that. It's even worse when they're young because they have a whole, a whole life ahead of them. You know what I'm saying? They have a whole life ahead of them and then they just do it away in a moment's notice. You know, I mean, my nephew took his life with a, with my, with my brother's gun. You know what I mean? And, uh, it's a, it affects us, but we've been able to kind of move on from it in the sense that we're, we're, we're a lot better in, in not grieving about it as much, you know, where it's like you have to live your life. But for those that have lost somebody to suicide, it's, um, it's a, it's, it's a, it's a heavy experience. It's a very um, challenging experience. So for anybody who has experienced something like that, where they've lost somebody to suicide, you know, I, I pray that you find that the, the most high, you can find strength in the most high to guide you in your mourning, in your um, challenges with feeling like it's your fault. Because that's another thing that happens. You start blaming yourself for what that person did. And it's unfortunate, but it's, it's something that I went through. So put your faith in the Most High. Ask the Most High to guide you. Allow the Holy Spirit to give you the wisdom to see things through. Right? And when we talk about these things, brothers and sisters, for those that are listening around the world, we don't represent religion here at the Network of Awareness. So when we're talking about these things, this is, a, this is a culture that we have. And our culture is Yahweh Elohim. And that culture comes from the Hebrews that practice this culture of giving their praise to that which is and always will be through people like Moses and many other brothers and sisters that were given or had that light in them that the Most High spoke through them. So this is not a religion. When we're saying give praise to the Most High and we're, we're very uh, passionate about it, it's not, it's, it's not a religion. And even though we are breaking down or or following scriptures. The scriptures are the words of the Most High to remind us of what's important and how to be and how to maintain uh, that culture and be upright in maintaining that culture um, amongst the, the, the world in the land of this planet where Satan really is powerful through deception. And I was telling uh, Brother Take One about this. I was telling Letter. I was telling my boy Billy Izzy. Shout outs to Billy Izzy from Imperial U Life Podcast. It's on the Network of Awareness. More shows are going to come out very soon from him. And I was telling him the same thing. It's like, you, you know, we're always under attack. I mean, just look at what's happening here in America. America is like, it's crumbling right before our eyes. And it's because these uh, we're so powerful in this culture and understanding of the Most High that if more of us were to connect like this, it's game over for these demons. They know that. So they have to put in a lot of effort. They have to spend, you know, like Billy was telling me today, they spend billions and trillions of dollars in an investment to keep you distracted 
from the true spiritual essence that you are, that they don't really want you to come to really come to a full um, inner standing to. So as long as they keep you distracted with the processed foods, with all of the distractions, with the temptations, with the ego, you wind up losing yourself. And they know this. That's why they invest so much time in it. You know what I mean? And that's why we have to stay focused in this culture of Yah, of, of the Most High, of that which is and always will be. So, I hope that this episode has given the people who have been listening to it on the live broadcast great substance. I hope that those that will be listening and downloading downloading later will also get great substance uh, from it. And like I always say, download from networkofawareness.com if you can, also leave a review. That's one thing I forgot to mention in my introduction is um, start leaving reviews if you can for these shows on the website. So that way um, other people that come to the website will see this and see those comments and be like, hey, oh, this person said this, this person said that. Let me check it out. It helps. And it's, it's, it just takes a moment's time, right? You don't got to write a long paragraph. You could write two or three sentences or one sentence, whatever, just like a lot of you brothers and sisters do in the Spreaker chat rooms after the fact. So if you could do that for me on networkofawareness.com, I greatly appreciate it. Also, um, is there any final comments that you would like to make on closing out this uh, 300th episode? Um, I just want to leave y'all with a, a sharp prayer. Um, I come to you, Yahweh Elohim, Yahweh and Yahweh. I just want you to put a shield of protection on me and Aura, and may we continue to guide in our steps and navigate our way through life together. And may we continue to spread these words of encouragement and uplifting words. Um, through these uh, social media platforms. And may I ask you also to provide each and every one of his listeners and everybody in the chat room and listening in the chat room um, to have peace of mind in their body, soul, and spirit. And may you continue to heal them and remove everything that's causing them any stress, grief, and sorrow in their lives. And may you continue to guide their paths through life and may you also continue to strengthen their faith um, and allow them to be more and more circumspect and discern things that's going on. May you not allow them to be distracted from things in life. And may you continue to um, strengthen them. And these in your name, we pray. Thank you, Yahweh Elohim, for yesterday, today, and going forward. Thank you. Brothers and sisters, um, this is just the beginning, right? Because when you live in the present, there's always an opportunity for a new beginning. So like how I always end my shows, don't look for the light at the end of the tunnel because that the end of the day the light is and always will be within you so light up the tunnel and find your way through the darkness i want to say forever favors to all the people that tuned in and that will be listening later and we give all our praise to the most high stay vigilant in your righteous intentions and be aware be very very aware. Peace, love, and light, brothers and sisters.